Okay, ready? Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> that was... <laughs> okay. Hello, drone racers. I'm Mark, and this is my long range FPV wing. You may have seen the parts for it on Instagram or Facebook, but we're going to take a look at it here. I have not flown it at all yet, so I want to record it just in case it flies away. Um, I hope it doesn't, but just in case. So this is an S800 wing Sky Shadow. This is the version two model. They are super popular and I see why. It's like $45 for the base unit that I got here. You can also get a almost ready to fly for $85-ish. But I'm gonna show you what I've done on this one because I tried to trick it out with prime components. Yeah, you can't actually see any of that. So inside here, there is a Furious FPV F35 flight controller. This is made for iNav. I'm gonna be running iNav on this. It comes with this GPS, which I've uh, hollowed out the foam and set it there. I've got a 4S2200 milliamp hour battery, which hopefully will let this thing fly virtually forever. Inside here we have a Bluetooth module which will work if you have an Android phone which I don't have so you can control the F35 with an, your Android phone. I, I can't do that. There's also a buzzer that it comes with. There is some extra wiring that I've got here but part of what's nice about the F35 is it comes with wires that are basically made for this wing. This wing is notched so there are traces right here that I've covered with electrical tape that run to the components. So inside here we have a free sky slim plus receiver. I have the stock antenna taped to the bottom in a horizontal fashion. And then I have a immortal T by team black sheep that is uh, on top and in a vertical position. Maybe not perfect for long range, but this is what I'm gonna try first. Part of what I wanna be able to do with this is test different methods so I can try it with the immortal T here. We can try it with the stock antennas. I can even try it with other receivers, totally not the 900 megahertz system. But the cables that it came with were exactly that length. So they ran through the bottom here, traced through right there. I didn't have to shorten them. They just plug in. Everything came pretty much ready to go. I had to do very little soldering to make that work. Same thing for the other side here, which one's to the VTX. Inside here, we have a Furious FPV long range. So this will do 700 milliwatts, I believe. So we'll connect that up. And I've got that connected with a short MMCX connector and then a 90 degree angle. So I've done some 3D printing here. I've got a 3D printed mount here to hold my antenna in place. It sits down in here and hopefully that'll hold in place better. I've not glued this in because it won't let me turn it if I do that, but I think it's gonna be pretty nice. I did the same thing with the antenna on this side with the receiver antenna. So it will hold it in a nice vertical position, hopefully. Back to the inside, you see I've got two capacitors here. I had terrible, terrible video interference. So that's part of the reason it's taking me so long. I had to figure out to get rid of it. The OSD just went away when I powered it up. So I've got two capacitors on here, one on the battery lead. So I've got it connected here directly. The other one is connected to the output to the ESC. The ESC I've got in here, I wanted to run an actual wing ESC with a BEC in it, but the one I got was too big and I was gonna have to wait weeks to get another one. So I've got a team motor 35 amp bl heli 32 esc in here now this comes with a plate that just covers over there i was a little concerned about heat on this so i printed another mount there are tons of 3d printed options for this thing so now it will be able to get airflow that will pass through so i think that'll be a lot better for uh, cooling the esc as it goes so i'm using that esc because i have a t motor f80 motor on here so this is a big motor, but I want to be able to power a large prop. This is a 60-40 prop. I can definitely run a seven inch prop on here. And I've got that connected to a 3D printed mount that I had on here also. So this mount, this mount is glued in place. What you're supposed to do with this is mount the motor on another piece and then glue it all together so you can't really change it. So what I've got here, and you can see it here before I glued it, this mount I put lock nuts on the back of and then I've got screws here to connect through. So I also, I can print shorter or longer mounts here for the motor. If I wanna take this off, I need to move the motor out further to get a bigger prop on it. I can do that just by printing a different option here. In the front here, I have a run cam camera, so it's uh, tucked in there nicely. It's a run cam Sparrow. I believe. I do not have a high def camera on this yet. I'm hoping I'll be okay weight wise because I have a bigger battery than is intended for it. Um, I don't want to risk my GoPro. I've got enough money in this thing already that I don't want to risk my GoPro flying away at this point. 
If it works out well, I will add that in the future. So that's the components I've got here. I'll uh, link this all down below. The capacitor I'm not sure of because I use the onboard BEC for the F35, which is not recommended. The only thing that is powering though is the receiver over here and the servos. The VTX I have connected and I have a separate wire here where I've wired everything up and I have that connected to the balance lead here. So I've got it just on the external connector. So I have battery voltage going to the antenna and then that has a BEC built in it, which is running to the camera. Now I thought using the BEC off of the VTX to the camera was gonna be ideal to prevent noise. Doesn't seem to be the case on this one. It seems to have been uh, counterproductive, but I'm not going to redo it yet. I may redo it later, but I wanna fly it. I wanna fly it now. So I may redo the way that all works. Oh yeah, servos. I have the Emacs digital servos with metal gears. So I didn't wanna strip gears. I have these hot glued in. I've had to redo that a couple times because I thought I was gonna to get to fly it yesterday and they actually popped out. So now I have a lot of hot glue in there. But overall, this is a really easy model to do. I will do a build video of one of these in the future, but I didn't wanna do it for my first one because I learned a lot in the process and you really shouldn't learn from me. There's lots of other videos on how to do it but I'm going to build a low cost version of one of these this flight controller alone with the GPS was over a hundred dollars I've got I've got a lot of money a lot of money in this thing I'm pretty sure I can build one of these for right at a hundred dollars and I'm not sure it wouldn't be just as good. So I'm gonna spec out a $100 version. I'll post everything for this one and then a $100 version. I'm gonna build one of those. I'll do a full build video on one of those. So if you want iNav, you wanna experiment with it, but you don't wanna invest a lot, 100 bucks, that's pretty good. All right, that's enough. Now I guess I'm gonna go outside and hope it doesn't fly away. Okay, I'm doing this first flight manually so I can set the uh, auto servo connection view thingy. I don't know, I, I don't know I nav, I'm still learning. The auto servo leveling when I do a flight. So I have the DVR recording, I'm not wearing the goggles. So I'm gonna do a launch here. I have launch wings before. Uh, I have 13 satellites, do a quick, let's see if I'm turning that way, it turns that way, yep, that looks right. So I will arm. I think that was armed. Motor. Okay, that looks like good speed. I do not have auto launch enabled or anything right now. So uh, here we go, I guess. Nope, didn't make it. Needs more throttle. We'll try that again. At least I don't think I broke anything. Canopy came up a little bit. Camera top up a little bit we'll try again with more throttle i should know just do full throttle but you know first time it's kind of scary especially when there are cars over there i don't want to go that far okay ready here we go Whoa. <laughs> too much <laughs> that was... <laughs> okay So I hope it's durable. Ah, uh, I need a partner for this. Kinda looks okay. Camera started to come loose, but it'll be fine. Clean that off. I really think everything's okay. Can't wait till I can use auto launch. I didn't want to get stuck in a tree. That was my worst nightmare. I think, oh. Where's the GPS? There it is. Thankfully, my camera is orange. There it is. There's my camera. I'm sure you're fine. So it's definitely durable. I mean, I already bent the antenna a little bit. That's fine. Really, the camera popped out. I should probably have that glued in anyway. But other than that, it's fine. Take it back over here to check the control surfaces. It's turning the right way. Let's pop that back into place. I kind of like that that doesn't break. Manual control servos still look good. All control surfaces still look good. All right, against my better judgment, I'm gonna try it again, because I think I can get it. If I was, if the trees weren't there, I'm pretty sure I had it.
There we go. Hey, look at that. She's flying. She flies pretty nice. Nice and steady. So what we've got to do first is get auto level working. Pretty smooth. It does need more nose weight. It's not very windy, but it's a little windy out here, but that's a nice slow cruise speed, but it'll turn nicely when I need it to. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we need uh, to figure out the level. I'm gonna call it that right there. So now I have to land it and not break it. Nice. Now I disarm, and that is supposed to save the auto level. Cool. Once it's in the air, it's a pretty good flyer. No, oh, I don't have enough satellites yet because I powered it off. I think that's it. Let's go check in the goggles. Oh, I left auto trim on. I gotta turn that off. Good. I'm glad it uh, told me exactly what the problem was. Control surfaces are still good. Or, uh, yeah, level mode and horizon mode to test next. There we go. Once it gets up in the air, it's not too bad. Okay, so if I have auto level mode, oh. So there I can turn the sticks all the way and it will maintain or auto correct to auto level. Wow, that's nice. Huh, that's pretty slick for an airplane. It does pretty good. So if I, I don't trust it a lot yet. There's nothing on the sticks. Look at that. That's pretty slick, I like it. So I'm happy with that. Doing good. So my tendency is to still autocorrect. So now let's try horizon mode, which will do the same thing away from the trees. Autocorrect, if I turn. Should be just like a drone, but then if I want to turn fast, I can. So there I can do a lot for their turns. But I don't have to. And then it'll auto level. Nice. I like playing sometimes. This is just nice and relaxing, even though it's only line of sight. Can't wait to get the goggles on. I don't know what it did. Oh no. Now I can fix that. That's gonna be into this one for now until I uh, fix that wing and reinforce the bottom here. So back where we started the day, we're really not too bad off. The servos stayed in place. The uh, GPS popped out, no big deal there. Everything inside here I think is going to be fine. We do have a little structural damage but uh, I think just a little glue in there and push that back together, that'll be fine. That's one of the nice thing about foamies is for the most part, you can just super glue them back together. The worst damage is actually on the bottom here. Uh, it broke here between the battery strap. So the flight controller is right in here. I think in one of the hits, it took too hard of a hit and the foam, you can kind of see it cracking there a little bit. So a little glue, um, probably a reinforcement plate 
across the bottom here. It actually came with these pieces of carbon and I kind of forgot about them. I'm wondering if this was supposed to be glued here on the bottom to reinforce this strap on this part or maybe in the middle, I'm not sure. I'm gonna find out there is an S800 group on Facebook that I just joined, so I'll ask them some questions about this, but I think it'll go back together and it'll be fine. So the next flight I'm going to try altitude hold, which I totally forgot about. I didn't wanna do GPS circle. I wasn't comfortable with that yet. We'll try an FPV flight and uh, we'll get the structure here back together. We're definitely gonna try auto takeoff. That's one of the things I think will help a lot because uh, it was a little rough getting it in the air. I'd be more comfortable if those trees weren't next to me. I might have to stand on the other side of the parking lot. But anyway, if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see done with this. We'll be able to do range tests at least out to a mile. I mean, that's not very long range, really. But I can get out a mile. I found a place close to my house that I should be able to go to. Then after that, we'll test out further, further than that. But I hope this is a test bed so we can test multiple receivers, different types of antennas here, so we can just change out the antennas, try it with free sky antennas, try it with TBS antennas, try it with any other antennas that we show out with. We'll be able to try multiple VTXs on this to do range tests to find out whether this is the best long range option or it's an AKK or it's a 2.4 gigahertz. We should be able to just swap those out in this model and uh, be able to test different things. That is the idea at least. So until next time, remember, I didn't want to get stuck in a tree. That was my worst nightmare.